This is the house that I grew up in and I had so many brilliant adventures, so many great memories that are in this house and the whole fields around it. Now today I've been with my boys uh, on the fields having, a, as you can see, a load of adventures uh, in the fields today. But I tell them the stories of stuff that happened when I was here because we are connected to the people who have gone before us. So that's these lads stories as well. And today we're going to hear about how, how people's stories affect us today. Story really matters, doesn't it? Where we come from really matters. And when we hear stories of faith, that builds our faith too. So today I want to speak to you about story and faith. I'm speaking from Hebrews 11, so if you've got a Bible like this, grab it. If you haven't got it on your, get it on your phone if you can do that. Um, some of it will come up on the screen as well. So uh, we're speaking from Hebrews 7, uh, and this is just packed full of stories that build faith. And that's what I hope it will do today. So as we're listening, my prayer, we pray, God, we know you're listening, and we pray that you would raise our faith as we listen and read your word together and read all about the stories of good things that you've done in the lives of so many of your amazing kids and we get to be part of that story so in Jesus name we ask that you would increase our faith as we read this together okay amen so let me tell you a story first to kick us off uh Someone called Deborah Green, you might have met her, uh, you might have come across her, she leads Redeeming Our Communities and she's based in Manchester, she's brilliant. Uh, she was at a conference and was given a key, they, I think they got loads of them from Timpsons, you know the cobblers, why do cobblers always make keys as well? Anyway, so they got given a load of keys, right? So she had one of these keys and the whole thing was that uh, faith is a key to unlocking something in people. And um, we have been given keys to unlock belief and faith in other people. So she had been given one of these keys and she had it either around her neck or, I don't know, on a keychain or something. She had it in her pocket. Anyway, then she was, uh, a couple of weeks later, she was speaking in a school, uh, like doing one of those PHSE lessons or something. She'd been given permission to come and teach. There's a load of normal kids, not Christian kids uh, necessarily. And she was in this lesson speaking about faith and why faith is so crucial and how it's possible to have faith. It can grow like from a mustard seed, right? We don't need loads of it, but it just grows. So she's speaking on this and she has this key. And then she realizes beforehand in the staff room, she'd heard them talking and they had this cupboard that they couldn't get into. They needed to get in this cupboard, couldn't get in it because they lost the key. So while she was speaking, she just felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to say, and it, th this isn't necessarily very wise to say this, right? This is putting yourself right out there. But she just felt a prompt from the Holy Spirit that said, your key will unlock that door. So she said, I've got a key here. The teachers can't get in to your cupboard. Um, I think I've got faith that this key, which I got given two weeks ago in a conference, I've got faith that this key will unlock that door. What do you think? And all the kids were like, well, no way. Why would it do that? It's just a random key. She said, oh, I've got faith that it will do it. Let's see if it works. So she walked over to the door of the cupboard. She got the key, put it in, turned it, and opened the cupboard. Extraordinary. The kids were absolutely amazed. And so was she. Her faith was increased. Their faith was increased because that was impossible. But faith is the belief that we can see impossible things happen because it's not just in our own strength it's because we're connected to the all-powerful the the one true Yahweh the uh, amazing God that we worship okay so that's who that's why all things are possible so today we're going to look at the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 11 now the whole book of Hebrews is talking to the Jewish people and explaining their connection from the Old Testament right through to the present day the New Testament and their place that they've got to play in it and also your place today because it's relevant for all of us in the whole narrative of God's story. But we're looking at Hebrews 11 specifically and uh, in Hebrews 11 it tells these great stories uh, of people of faith that inspire us in our faith because stories about faith encourage our faith, they increase our faith. So we're going to read that together. We're going to read the whole of Hebrews 11. It's great to read big parts of scripture together. So we're going to do that and I'll speak into it as we go. 
But just a little bit of background for this. Now, you could probably aware some of this stuff already, but the Jewish people were confused. This is why the writer of the Hebrews has got to write specifically to them, because they're confused. They, as a people, have become Christians, even though uh, their ancestors weren't Christians. Um, and their ancestors went all over the desert. They uh, have amazing stories, which they've told verbally, uh, these amazing stories of their people who they were related to. And they know them so well because they tell stories verbally. Um, but now they're kind of going, well, well, what's going on now? Do, are we still, is that all relevant? Should we just chuck all of that away? Or should we now get uh, a completely new story that we're part of? And the writer of the Hebrews is saying, no, it is all connected. It's all crucial. You're part of something so meaningful um, and it's actually fulfilled in you. Their stories are fulfilled in you. So that's where we're kind of going today. And we get to be part of that story too. Your faith will increase as we look at this together because it's what happens when we talk about faith together. When we remind ourselves of what God has done, your faith increases. That's why we need to tell stories so much. So the writer of the Hebrews is trying to win over these Jewish converts to Christianity in the first century. And he does this by, uh, he uses 24 Psalms from Hebrews. Uh, in, in the book of Hebrews, sorry, and he references the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of our Bible, the Torah. He references that 23 times in Hebrews. So he's definitely trying to hook them in going, this is all so relevant right through to your story right today. So that's how he's winning them over. And even in Hebrews 11, this thing we're going to read together, um, there are 20 people from Jewish history who are mentioned um, it's only 20, by the way, if you count both the parents of Moses. But why wouldn't you count both of them? You know, they both had a role, right? So let's, let's count them both in, then it's 20. Okay, so this story people are being brought into Yahweh's great big story that they are part of. Verses 1 to 3. What is faith? Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Okay, so hope um, is so crucial, but faith is hope in something that we can't yet see. It's a belief in something that isn't yet possible, but knowing it could happen, but only with God. That's what faith is. So it's not just hope that something, you know, will happen by chance. That's like just a wish, I guess. I wish this would happen. There's nothing wrong with hoping things will happen like that. Like I kind of, you know, whether you, you hope that Roy McElroy wins another major or something like that, right? But that's not faith. I haven't got faith in that. I just hope that that will happen because I'd like it to happen. But um, having faith in something is an assuredness that something is possible. You, like you almost know it can happen or know it will happen, even though it doesn't seem possible. That's what faith is. Now, Jesus said, he reminded us when things are impossible, that it is possible with God. In Matthew 19, verse 26, just after he has kind of sent away the rich young ruler, I guess, because he's looking for the meaning of life and the purpose and how, how does he get eternal life. And um, he says you need to go through the eye of a, a needle, unless a camel, like a camel going through the eye of a needle, right? And he's like, that is impossible. He's really disappointed. He doesn't, you know. Um, so he said to the disciples, isn't he, that you've got to go through the eye of a needle. They say that's not possible. And... He says, yes, you're, you're right, basically. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And that is so crucial to faith, knowing all things are possible with God. In the Old Testament, in the stories you see here, it's impossible things happening all the time. But they are possible with God because he is able to do all things. He's able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. And... Well, that's good news because sometimes we're not always brilliant at asking for things and we aren't always great at imagining. But he can do more than both of those things. Okay, that's why we need faith.
Now let's read verses 4 to 16. And we're going to see some real key, crucial people in the story of God. We're going to see Abel. We're going to see Enoch. We're going to see Noah. And we're going to see Abraham and his wife, Sarah. So let's look out for them. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks, even though he is dead. That's interesting, isn't it? Because faith leaves a legacy. When we encourage other people's faith, it keeps giving throughout the generations. The people who, if you're, if you're a, a person who's given your life to Jesus today, that's because somebody helped you to find faith in Jesus and someone helped them to find faith in Jesus and someone helped them. And that person might needed a lot of faith to do that and to lead that person to Jesus, but they did and they led this person and they led that person and that's why you're following Jesus today. That is a legacy of faith that just keeps giving throughout the generations. So that's why uh, Abel is able to still speak even though he is dead. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found. There's an existential crisis. Because God had, has taken him away. For before he was taken, God was commend, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Enoch is one of those people who's before the time of Noah, when all the game changed. Uh, so it's before, it's sort of the, all the rules are off, right? But when in, in this uh, story of Enoch, you see this crazy bit where Enoch suddenly just doesn't exist because God was like, well done, <laughs> off he goes. Crazy verse. By faith, Noah when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the, of the righteousness that comes by faith. Noah was such a man of faith, wasn't he? Imagine building this huge ark in the middle of a desert in anticipation of God sending a flood or not even really knowing what was going to happen, but just knowing God has asked you to do it. So obedience is such a key in faith. It's when you have a sense that God is saying to do something and you follow that sense because you know, you know God, you know his word, you know this, I'm going to do this. I wonder what that is for you today. If there's certain things that you just know God has prompted you to do, maybe it's to speak to someone, maybe it's to send an email to someone, maybe it's to uh, encourage someone in a particular way, or maybe it's to begin a new project like Noah building an ark. Who knows? But do you know that that's something God has said to? Because I, I suspect there are people who just know that God has nudged them. Today's the day to act on it. Why not be brave, be courageous, be obedient and act on that word? So by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. He was obedient even though he didn't know where it would finish. He trusted God and he was like, I will go because you have called. I don't know where I will finish. I don't need to know the whole story, but you've called, so I'll be obedient. Amazing faith. We all can do this. God doesn't give us the whole script. He's like, come, come to me, come this next step. And we find out as we go. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was, he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was able to become a father because he considered him, him faithful who had made the promise. He trusted God would fulfill it. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came the descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. So God did this amazing thing that he had promised he would do, but Abraham had absolutely good reason to not believe it anymore. He had all the reasons to just think, well, I must have got that wrong. But he was walking with God and he trusted 
and he kept believing, he kept faith, and God fulfilled his promises because that's what he does. Now, that's, now listen to this in verse 13. This is so important for us, okay? All these people were still living by faith when they died. We don't always get to see the fulfillment of what God uh, gives us as a dream, as, a, as a, an idea, as a vision. We don't always see that fulfillment. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country that they had left, they, they would have had an opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. These people had a vision and a dream of something that had not yet come to pass. They never saw it. Even when, they were di- even when they died. That's sad. That's hard. They wanted to see it. Like Moses never walked into the promised land. That's hard. We don't always see the fulfillment. But they knew they were citizens of heaven. They were part of this great story. They knew that other generations would see it. So they gave their lives to lay the foundations, to see the way so that other people could also walk in that fulfillment. We get to be part of this fulfillment, and we'll get to that later on, which is just incredible that we get to do this, isn't it? A few years ago, uh, a young lady came to me uh, and asked, she had a vision, she wanted to do something, Um, and it was just bonkers. She had this idea of something she wanted to do, and I thought, do you know what? I don't really know whether you're in a great place, you seem pretty vulnerable. I'm not sure that it's the best time for you to do this, and she was like, I'm going to do it because God has given me this vision. And I, if I'm completely honest, I thought it was nuts. And I'm often one to encourage people to follow their visions. But I said to uh, her, I think this is a bad idea. I think this is a, a silly idea. And you're making a mistake, in my opinion. I am pleased to say she totally ignored my advice because she knew in faith. She knew what God had said. So she was obedient to it. Uh, that young lady was Emily Finch, who set up the bus stop. Uh, charity. She bought a bus with her life savings. I thought it was crazy. Well, it is kind of crazy, but I thought it was a silly mistake and it wasn't a silly mistake. I was wrong. And she, uh, I've told her that many times. I've told her, you, I'm so glad you went for this. I didn't speak well of it to start with. You, you really nailed it. Um, she uh, set up the bus stop. They bought the bus. They w- drove the bus into all sorts of communities that otherwise wouldn't have had youth provision. Uh, And she's now moved on. She's getting ordained and she uh, has passed on the bus stop. And that still now runs as a thing. Amazing. She was a woman of faith who heard a vision. She saw a vision. She knew something that God was saying. And because she knew God and his voice, she did it anyway. She was obedient and she was courageous. Okay, let's keep reading. Um, We're going to fire through some amazing heroes of faith and then we'll come into land. All right. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, uh, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about uh, to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Amazing faith to know, I know you've told me, God, that you will fulfill this. I've had this kid, even though we shouldn't have had a kid um, (laughs) biologically. We've had it. You're telling me to sacrifice him, so I will be obedient. It's amazing faith because he just knew that God would fulfill it anyway. By faith, Isaac, that kid, um, blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So faith overcomes fear as well. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be the ill-treated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. 
because he had a vision of the future that was better than the earthly one he was living in. And he knew this is preferential. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, as he persevered because he saw who is invi- him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By the way, there was a little reference there to how Moses was aware of a connection to Christ. He knew his connection in the bigger story of what was not yet to come. It didn't yet happen. It was the Messiah, the rescuer, the uh, the saviour of Israel. And he knew his role was relevant to that. And it was so relevant to that. It mirrored it in so many ways. And he was aware of that. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, uh, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Okay, so amazing load of people here, isn't there, that are just full of faith. And remember, the Hebrews are being reminded, this is your story, right? And they're, they're going to be reading this going, oh yeah, these people are like our greatest hits. These are our absolute faith-filled people. And where the writer of the Hebrews is taking them is that they have a crucial role to play in this whole story. And that's where we're going to go now. This is an absolute belter of a passage, so I hope I do it justice. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. How many of them were there? The prophets, so many. Full of faith who would speak God's word. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of flames, and escaped the edge of the sword. Whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life. Others were tortured and refused to be released, so that... They might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while others still were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went out in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. The amount of stuff that they had to go through, absolutely incredible. They wandered in the deserts and the mountains and in the caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Listen into this bit. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that together with us they would be made perfect. What he's saying here is to the Jewish people he's writing to who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. Through us, as a church, as a people, it is all being fulfilled. This Old Testament story that you have grown up knowing is intrinsically connected to the New Testament story that we are now living out. The Old Covenant is fulfilled. The New Covenant is here. The promises of Jesus have been fulfilled in the person of Jesus when he went to the cross as a sinless man, when he died for all the sins of humanity. He connected the whole thing together when he raised, when he was raised to death, uh, to life, sorry, and ascended to heaven. He fulfilled everything. And these people are like being, they're being brought into the story, like in one of those movies that you watch, when it's all a bit random and there's kind of scenes over here and you don't understand who that person is and you don't understand how it connects together and it's all a bit arty and a bit weird. And then all of a sudden at the end, it all converges and comes together and you're like, oh, that's a masterpiece. That is an absolute masterpiece. It all connects together. It all makes sense. Wow. And that's what the writer of the Hebrews is doing here. This is the greatest story ever told. And he's saying to them, you are written into that story. And those guys didn't waste their lives. Through you, 
they are being fulfilled. Their story has come to fulfillment. Through Jesus, we're written into the script. We have a part to play in the play. We have been given an instrument and we've been asked to join in with the amazing music of heaven. You need faith if you can see something that is almost impossible to happen without God. You need faith if you ever experience doubt. You need faith if you ever feel overwhelmed. You need story which will increase your faith because you need to know that you're not on your own. You need story if you need reminding of all the great things that God has done. You need story if you are the kind of person who forgets that you're in a bigger picture. This picture behind me right now, Hannah and I have had this on our wall for years and it speaks to us deeply because you, you can't see this from this angle, but right about there, right where the sun is rising, there's two tiny little people. And we love it for a few reasons, but we, we've imagined it throughout lots of different hardship that we've been through, that we are the two that God has pulled together in our marriage and we are walking into what God has got for us. We're walking in faith, we're walking not knowing everything that is to come, but we know he's called us together and we're walking together as a couple. There's been times as well when we've imagined uh, that those two uh, characters is like one of us uh, and God when we've had something difficult to journey through individually. And it's like walking with Jesus through something hard. But that's the invitation of faith. That's the story is you're part of a bigger picture. The sun will rise again. You are part of, no matter what you're going through that's so hard right now, you're walking with God and you can walk in towards more of the promise that he has for you in faith. We have an opportunity to be like this. People are com commended for their perseverance in hardship, for their endurance and their obedience, for their faith. They didn't see it all fulfilled, but it was worth the journey. Through Jesus, we are part of a greater story, the greatest story. What if we dared to live like we believed that every day? What if we kept our eyes focused on heaven like we were citizens of a different place, not just of here, that we didn't become beholden to the, to the same old fears and the same old pressures that everybody lives by? How would it affect how we lived? How would our attention be kept differently? Well, my prayer today is that your faith has been increased by seeing that you have a crucial part to play in God's bigger story. That you're not just some random person that's living in probably England uh, in, in uh, 2021, like so many years after Jesus. Surely it's just become irrelevant now. Surely you're just, that's not true. He knows you as well as he has known every, any other person to have lived, as well as he knows any other people in these stories. These people didn't see the fulfillment of what God promised them, but they faithfully kept going through difficulty, through hardship. And you can do that too. And you are, the invitation is to join in, in faith, with what you sense God is saying, what you feel through the Holy Spirit he is drawing you to, to be courageous, to be full of faith, to be a people who are willing to believe that God is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. And it is all possible because Jesus fulfills it all. So I'm going to pray to finish. Jesus, thank you so much for what you have done and how you connect the entirety of history together. Thank you that you are the linchpin, the, the fulcrum the cornerstone. You are the thing that holds it all together. And thank you so much that you write us into your story. And so I pray that we would, as a community, grow in our faith so that we would dare to believe that we have a part to play in your bigger story. Amen. <laughs>